and welcome to another exciting episode of Day Spring Discussion Time. Your host, Sean McGahee. And this is the show where we talk about movies, TV, sci-fi, fantasy, comic books. If you geek out about it, we're going to talk about it. You can listen to Day Spring Discussions on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic, and Patreon. And contact Day Spring Discussions on the Facebook group, Twitter account, and DaySpringDiscussions at gmail.com. Well, happy Thursday, everyone. It is a sunny day here in Austin, Texas. I got the day off, took the car in to do a little body work, which means I'm stuck at home giving you great content. I got a few things I'm going to run through today. And then, of course, being that it is Thursday, I read yesterday's comics, so I'm going to give you a couple recommendations for that. And overall, just have a great show, guys. So sit back and let's get to it. Yesterday, we got a new trailer for the upcoming Pacific Rim sequel, Pacific Rim Uprising. This is the sequel to the 2013 Guillermo del Toro film. And in this one, it's been 10 years since the events of the first film. And the son of Idris Elba's character, Jake, played by John Boyega, seems a bit lost. And he's picked up by his adopted sister, Mako, and is looking to re-implement him into the Jaeger program. Now, it also looks like someone from Earth has reopened the gate to the kaiju world, and we got monsters coming out of it. Not only that, it looks like we also have Jaegers that are going against Jaegers in this film. Not much else is known, it looks like, just from this trailer. Looks like we also have a couple of young cadets looking to step up and be Jaeger pilots as well. In the film, we see the return of Charlie Day as Dr. Newt. Gizizer, I don't know how to say his last name. And then, of course, his buddy, played by Byrne Gorman, are back for this one, as well as lots of other new people, including Scott Eastwood, who looks like it's going to be Boyega's partner in the Gypsy Jaeger. Now, like I said, there was a couple shots of, like, a younger girl and a couple of young cadets. At first, I saw the young girl, and I was like, Nah, I really don't dig this. It looked like what they were trying to do with the last Transformers film where they wanted to capture that demographic. They felt like they weren't getting good enough, which was young girls. So they put a young girl in the film. Now looking at the trailer, I thought eh, that wasn't going to be good enough. And then I actually saw the Transformers movie, which was a total piece of crap. But then you realize the girl actually isn't that big a part of the film and they were just using her for marketing. Maybe this is what they're doing with this film, and the girl's not that big of a part of it. In any event, I saw the trailer at first. I was like, oh, God, tell me they're not doing what Transformers did. But then as the trailer went on, you saw there were younger, other younger kids. So I think that makes more sense. Rather than just having a singular little girl who's there just to bring in little girls to the film, if they have a whole bunch of younger people and it makes sense in the story – to bring in these younger cadets, perhaps the older Jaeger pilots die and you have to bring in the young cadets. Maybe that's what happens. I don't know. Either way, monsters fighting robots, that's what we want from this film. That looks like that's what we're going to get. The film is being directed by Stephen S. DeKnight. He is mainly known for being a showrunner on Netflix's Daredevil. He's also been a producer on shows that I've loved, such as Angel and Smallville. So overall, it's his real first directing gig, but he's done things that I've liked, so I'm going to give him a little bit of a credit. Again, this is really the Pacific Rim films or film. You're there for the action, okay? You're there to see giant robots fighting giant monsters. People criticize the plot and some of the story of the previous Pacific Rim film. I thought it was fine. wasn't great. But it wasn't what the main thing we were there for. It was just complimentary to all the cool action. I think we're getting plenty of cool action as long as, again, we have a complimentary storyline that doesn't suck. John Boyega, I think, is a good enough actor along with Mr. Eastwood. I think they're going to give us a decent amount of plot and characters that we can care about. The rest is up to the CGI monsters and robots. Which look awesome. I saw Pacific Rim in 3D, which is very rare. I don't see a lot of 3D films. I'm tempted to see this one in 3D as well. I just might have to break my no 3D rule to go do it. There are very few films that I've seen in 3D in theaters that I think are actually worth it. 
this might actually be one of them. So we'll just wait and see. But any event, I'm looking forward to seeing this in film. It looks like a nice big popcorn film. So check out the trailer, guys. Fire back on the social media account and let me know if you're planning on checking it out. Another trailer we've gotten within the last week is the newest animated film upcoming from Warner Brothers Animation and DC Entertainment. And that is Suicide Squad Hell to Pay. Now this is the next line of animated films coming from the joint studios. Directed by Sam Liu who also produced the film and has directed a lot of the previous other DC animated films such as Gotham by Gaslight, Teen Titans, Judas Contract, etc. He's no stranger to these movies, which is why I think he's a good person to do this. He's got a good grasp on the DC animated movie world. Now, this was complimentary to Gotham by Gaslight, the newest animated DC film that just came out on VOD. It's going to come out on Blu-ray and DVD sometime within the next few weeks, I believe. I've tried looking for it online. I haven't found it yet, but I'm definitely looking to check out Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Uh, look very interesting. I'm very interested in seeing it. Now, in Suicide Squad, Hell to Pay, we see Amanda Waller's Task Force X on a mission to retrieve a mystical object so powerful they're willing to risk their lives to steal it. But the Suicide Squad isn't the only group of villains seeking to possess the object. Villainous forces in the film include Zoom, voiced by C. Thomas Howell, who also voiced Zoom in several other animated projects, such as Flashpoint Paradox. And then, of course, the main villain, you have Vandal Savage, the immortal villain who is really cool, one of my favorite DC villains. It's nice to see him in there. So you have them going against other villains, which as it should be. Now, the Suicide Squad live-action movie, not a fan of. I saw it in theaters, kind of disappointed, kind of disappointed how the film came together. I know they're looking to do a sequel. I'm not excited about it, but I'm not a big anti-hero guy as well. So when I first looked at this trailer, I wasn't excited about it. But then there are two things that got me excited. Number one, there's a scene in there where Killer Frost freezes someone and then Harley Quinn takes the baseball bat and knocks his head off. Now this film is rated R. In the in the little green, you know, sensor thing it says at the beginning, it says violence, graphic nudity, all that stuff we should have gotten from the live action Suicide Squad film. That little this scene that this film is going to be a little hardcore gives me a little hope that I actually want to see it. I'm still not excited about it, but I think it could do what the live action Suicide Squad film did not, which was go over the edge. These are villains, okay? They are nasty, rough people. The Suicide Squad film, as much as Warner Brothers tried to boast that these are the bad guys. They weren't bad, okay? Any, All those villains, except for maybe Captain Boomerang, had a good side to them, especially the lead character, Deadshot, played by Will Smith. In this one, Deadshot's being voiced by Christian Slater. We'll see if he does any more in the future, but again, not excited about this film, except for that one little scene. And on the DVD, they put out the special features. The next one we're going to get from DC Animation is the Death and Return of Superman two-parter. They've got a little preview coming on the Suicide Squad Hell to Pay DVD. So really that gets me excited. It's not even the actual film that gets me excited. It's the fact that we're getting a preview for the, Su the Superman film that's going to come out next. That really <laughs> is the most thing I'm excited about when it comes to this film. DC Animation has promised us a two-parter in the Death and Return of Superman, so I'm very curious how close they're going to stick to the original storyline. You got Death of Superman, you got Funeral for a Friend, you got the Reign of Superman, and then you have the Return of Superman. I'm curious how much we're going to get. I wonder if we're going to get all four. You did have Superman Doomsday several years ago, or many years ago, I guess, that kind of hinted and dipped into that storyline. And then, of course, the most recent live-action DC films, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League kind of skirted around the death and return of Superman stories. They didn't do it very well. I've got issues with that, but I'm not going to go into them right now. So I'm really excited for the animated versions because I think the animated movies are doing better than the live action. 
I really enjoyed Justice League Dark, Flashpoint Paradox, the Batman animated films such as Batman and Son, Batman vs. Robin, and Batman Bad Blood, I think have all been really good. I haven't enjoyed the Teen Titans ones, recent ones, but they've been okay. I'm excited for Gotham by Gaslight. Like I said, Sam Liu really has kind of overseen everything, and I think he's doing an okay job. Death and Return of Superman, as a Superman fan, I really want to see it done right. I think it'd be really cool if it was done right. So, again, the thing I'm most excited about this Suicide Squad animated film is getting the special feature to look at the Superman film that's coming next. I know it sounds bad, but that's just how it goes. Oh, my phone's going off, guys. Sorry about that. I got a notification. Oh, and it's my friend Maggie's birthday. I sent her a Harry Potter text message wishing her happy birthday, and she just got it saying thank you. So, happy birthday, Maggie. All right, and the last thing I want to talk about just briefly is that it does have Christian Slater as Deadshot. A couple other notable voices has got Tara Strong, who literally voices a bunch of stuff. If you know who Tara Strong is, look her up on IMDb. She's voiced a lot of animated stuff. I know her from Young Justice and Teen Titans. She's doing a voice in the Teen Titans Go movie coming out. And being that I have a daughter, uh, she also does some voices for the My Little Pony stuff as well. So that's great to have a talent like that in this film. She's doing Harley Quinn. Like I said, I mentioned Thomas C. Howell as Zoom. And then Vanessa Williams, the great actress and singer herself, is going to be voicing Amanda Waller. So overall, pretty decent voice casting for this film. Something else that gives me a little glimmer of hope that it might actually be good. Okay, well that is it as far as the news for today, guys. I'm going to finish it off, of course, today with some comic reviews. So I sat down last night, went through yesterday's comics that I enjoy, and I got a couple recommendations for you if you're into my recommendations, that is. But first, I want to promote this book that I just got from the library, Secret Hero Society Detention of Doom. Now this is the third book in the Secret Hero Society series. And I gotta say, I, I enjoy this. It's really fun, cute read. Basically what the premise of it is that you have all the DC superheroes and supervillains attending this prep school. And Diana, Clark, and Bruce are the main characters. The first book, they started off uh, not knowing each other. Then they came together because something weird was going on at the school. And as the series of books have gone on, they've expanded out. And added more characters. You got Barry and Oliver joining their ranks. And in this one, I haven't started it yet, but just from the back, it looks like they're sent to the Phantom Zone in some kind of detention zone, and they have to try to get out. I've enjoyed the first two books. They're really cute, really interesting. It's almost like the writer Derek Ferdolfs took the superheroes of DC and put them in kind of a Hogwarts setting, I guess, because you kind of have Clark, Bruce, and Diana as kind of the Harry, Ron, and Hermione sort of vibe going on. But in any event, it's a really cute read. If you haven't checked it out and you're a fan of DC heroes, go do that. It's just, it's fun. You know, it's, it's fun with the DC characters, so go do that. All right, so moving on to the actual books. First up, Flash number 39 otherwise known as flash 700 that's right flash is celebrating his 700th issue as far as the legacy numbers are concerned coming up in the next few months we do have action comics number a thousand a milestone issue in comics you can be sure i'm actually going to go out to my local comic book store and pick up the physical copy of that but flash for now hits 700 congratulations on that and this one, I've been enjoying The Flash lately. In Story-wise, he's kind of trying to apologize to Iris for certain things he's done wrong recently. Showing Iris kind of his world, taking her around his day and what he does. And then Groot shows up at the end and is looking to take the Speed Force from Barry. Overall, Williamson doing a great job with the story lately in Flash. So I'd enjoy it. Go ahead, check it out for yourself. Let me know what you think. Next up, we got the Fantastic Two, or Marvel 2-in-1, I guess. The Thing in the Human Torch, issue number two. I've been enjoying the Fantastic Four for many years now. I enjoy this issue as well. We got Johnny and Ben 
continuing their adventures without Reed and Sue. Looks like Reed left Ben a message that he wants him continue to explore the multiverse and the negative zones. So he's trying to get Johnny on board, tricking Johnny into thinking that in doing this might bring back Reed and Sue. So I'm pretty sure that's going to blow up in his face eventually. And then, of course, you throw in Victor Von Doom in there, a nice foil for the two of them. I'm enjoying this series. Uh, of course, I've always loved the Thing and Human Torch's relationship. They have such a history together now. They have that brother. They were the siblings of the Fantastic Four. Reed and Sue were pretty much the parents. So it's like the siblings are without mom and dad trying to figure out what they can do and how they do it right. Overall, very enjoyable read, especially if you're a Fantastic Four fan. I recommend checking it out. All right, guys, and the final book I'm going to plug today is Avengers Infinity War Prelude. That's right. We are less than 100 days away from Avengers Infinity War out in theaters. Have you started your Marvel Cinematic Universe review? I haven't. I plan to do that sometime in the next couple months. But in any event, this was interesting. I'm not really a big fan of the Prelude comics. Marvel does these for almost all the Marvel movies. The Black Panther one wasn't too bad. You kind of see how T'Challa actually put on the Black Panther mantle way before Civil War. It was actually close to the beginning of the MCU when Tony Stark came out as Iron Man. You see T'Challa has actually been Black Panther for that long. And this one, it starts off with the beginning of Civil War, the end of it with Tony and Cap and Bucky, all of them fighting. And then it continues on to see how Bucky and Cap broke his Avenger squad out of prison, that water-based prison, which it answered my question because I was curious at the end of Civil War how Cap got all the way out in the ocean and broke his friends out. So that answered my question. And then it's, you see what happens after that. So looks like Hawkeye and Ant-Man go back to their families. Tony is still working on how to defeat the big problem he sees coming, which is the alien invasion. Something he's been thinking about since Age of Ultron. That's why he created Ultron, and he's still got that on his mind. He's probably doing worse now because he's all by himself because Rhodey is in recovery, and Vision looks like he runs off with Wanda in secret. And then, of course, you have Cap, Falcon, and Black Widow doing secret missions around the world. This one, they're taking out some arms dealers that have got their hands on some Chikari tech and kind of again fills in the gaps of where our heroes are going to be at the beginning of Infinity War. And that's what I like. I don't want just like a, a fill-in of the previous film, which is a lot of these prelude comics. This actually lets you know what the gap is between Civil War and Infinity War. And also, of course, we get quite a bit of Black Panther in this, which sets up the upcoming Black Panther film coming out in just a few weeks. But in any event, of course, if you're a fan of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and curious where the, what the heroes are up to, check this out and you can see for yourself. So, All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. Time for you to fire back and let me know what you think. Are you excited for Pacific Rim? Do you think it looks interesting at all and then of course what do you think of the suicide squad hell to pay animated movie are you as excited as i am for the film that is to come out next and then of course comic recommendations do you plan on checking out any ones i've recommended are there any that you read that you're excited about and want to recommend to me let me know on the facebook group twitter account dayspringdiscussions at gmail.com that's going to be it for me today guys i'm going to try to do a show tomorrow we'll see if that happens or not if not, I'll see you next time. Until then, may the force be with us all.